you. The Bucks. <laughs> I've got. I'm sorry, I stripped your covers We've off. We've got Sky Hunter. We've got Steel Striker. Oh, thanks. I <laughs> want to go grab yours. And, you know, do a little show while while we wait. <laughs> See what Steel Striker looks like so underneath gorgeous. the jacket. Oh, thanks. See what Steel Striker looks like on the side. Oh, this, I mean, seriously, I, like everything about the packaging is incredible. Thank you. Yeah, Matt did a really amazing job with this packaging. Like, I just, it's really nice. It's really There's nice. Thank you. Yeah, I'm super <laughs> giddy about it. <laughs> Great. Okay, so it seems like we have quite a few people here, so let's go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to PNP Live. My name is Jane, and I'm a bookseller in the Children and Teens Department at Politics and Prose. Thank you for tuning in to our virtual event where we continue to bring authors and new books to you. Today, we celebrate the launch of Steel Striker, written by Marie Liu, who is joined in conversation by Adam Silvera. Closed captioning is available for today's program. So click the live description, live transcript button at the bottom of your screen and select show transcript. We'll drop the link for purchasing the book into the chat box. So be sure to reserve your copy today. Signed book plates will also be available while supplies last. The link also includes other amazing books by our authors. For today's event, you can ask the authors a question by clicking on Q&A at the bottom of your screen. You can also vote on your favorite questions by clicking the thumbs up. Now for tonight's event, Marie Liu is the best-selling author of the Legend Trilogy and the Young Elites Trilogy. Marie started her career in the video games industry and now works as a full-time writer. Today, we celebrate the launch of Steel Striker, the sequel and conclusion to Sky Hunter. Steel Striker continues Talon's story as she tries to piece together her fallen nation and separated friends while also being recruited as a deadly war machine for the Federation. Suspenseful and action-packed, Steel Striker artfully resolves the Sky Hunter duology. Marie is joined by Adam Silvera, the best-selling author of Infinity Sun, Infinity Reaper, They Both Die at the End, More Happy Than Not, and History is All You Left Me. Adam used to work in the publishing industry as a bookseller and a book reviewer of young adult and children's books. Marie and Adam, over to you. Yay. Thank you so much, Jane. Thanks, Jane. <laughs> thanks, politics and Yay. pros, for hosting. Um, thanks to everyone who's here. We know that there's a lot of um virtual event fatigue after you know doing this for a year and a half now so we're super grateful that you are all here to support the store and support marie um so yeah huge thanks to everyone who is uh showing up today thank marie, you guys so much yeah. how are you doing happy I'm Steel Striker day <laughs> thanks adam thank you for being on chat with me thank you politics and pros um I'm super excited to chat with you. I can't wait to do this again in person because I, I miss Seriously. seeing your faces and like, yeah, this, is, like this is great, but you know, yeah. You know, the last event we got to do in person together was for the Infinity Sun launch that we did yeah. with Victoria oh Aviar. So that was oh January God. 2020. Adam, that was right before everything went down. Oh. Yeah, so that um, that's not fun. Thankfully, I have yeah. seen you in person a couple of times because we are vaccinated and we got Yay. vaccinated at the same spot. Um, yeah. and, uh, that's, it's a whole story we won't even get yes, into. It, yeah. there, there, there really is. <laughs> but um, we are safe. Yes, we are. Um, well, congratulations on completing another series. Uh, I don't know how you continue to do it. I'm so in awe of you. Like, I really am just like, I, I mean, I'm such a, a geek about your work too. And I know I've said this to you in person. I've said this at events, um, but I'm just, I'm truly in awe of how, how many just incredible worlds you create. Like, I feel like sometimes authors have like one great series in them, <laughs> you know, which, is, and where they have like, they, you could tell they've been like brewing over all those ideas for years and years and it just shows in their work. Right. Um, but then the next series maybe like doesn't quite like go as hard. Whereas you, I've read all your series um, and we'll be Aww. concluding with, you know, Steel Striker now um, for the Sky Hunter duology. And I'm just like, I, I just don't know how you do it. Like every world feels so distinct and full and, and you pop out a book like every year. Like I am, I am, <laughs> this means this means a lot coming from you, especially. So, what are you talking about? You make amazing series, um, like yeah, Infinity uh, Reaper was such a great follow up to Infinity Sun. Like sequel books you. are so hard, and you got a sequel coming up too. 
like yeah. um, peers to us. So yeah, Got yeah, it. and yeah, I, I went from having from no sequel ever to two sequels in one year. <laughs> um, but <laughs> but truly, like I really like as you know, like I am such a um, especially like a young elites geek, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Um, and yeah, and I just I mean I I really am like I there's I, I was thinking about this the other day. I was like there's you know I feel like there are a lot of authors who I've probably read at least like one book of theirs and I'm like oh no I've read like the majority <laughs> of oh, your books and um and I, and I and really like I, I get so inspired by them as a writer and you 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 have this ability to create like such like distinct voices in your works too um which I'm, I'm, I'm excited to talk about some of your different characters like across the board um but for those who are here today um should we start off with just a little bit about like what the Sky Hunter duology is a about, like your yeah. your spoiler light um, <laughs> uh, um, approach uh, or pitch, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, thank you. Gosh, I'm like blushing. Thank you so much for being <laughs> just an awesome, kind friend, super talented, kind, brilliant friend. Thank you. Um, and uh, Sky Hunter, Sky Hunter um, started off in 2016. So a lot of it is like all of my series, like I can look back and it's a snapshot of like, what was happening in the world and what my thoughts were at the time and like what was keeping yeah. me up at night. And so Sky Hunter is definitely like the 2016 onward series. Um, and fun the, the, yeah, fun times. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So the genesis of it uh, first came out because I was reading this really fascinating nonfiction book called um, Fallen Glory, the lives and deaths of history's greatest buildings. And it's written <laughs> very narratively. Um, it was fascinating because talks about all of these like ancient ancient buildings built by like you know ancient kings like Babylon or like the Tower of Babel or Library of Alexandria and all these like super ancient um civilizations and all these rulers who thought that they were going to be around forever and that this was like their key to immortality that this was they were the greatest pinnacle for whatever um that they were gods and then it all just kind of disappeared into the sands of time and I just, it, the whole thing was so eerie uh, and that environment really stuck with me. And I felt like I wanted to write a story that was set, you know, 5,000 years in our future because 5,000 years is like a ridiculously long time. And right. when you look back like 5,000 years from now and the world was like completely different. And so I'm like, well, what, it, you know, what happens if we disappear into the, into the dust of time? And then there's new people there and they're digging through, you know, like the, our tweets from the Library of Congress and like, what are they going to make of us? Right. Right? So, um, so Sky Hunter is, um, it is set in the far future, uh, 5,000 years in our future in a regressed version of our society, um, a land that's been almost completely taken over by this giant federation um, that's conquered every nation in the world, except for this one tiny country called Mara. And it's about this elite young group of warriors who are trained specifically to fight the Federation's monsters that they unleash into the world. Um, these monsters are, are incredibly ruthless and they have great hearing and, it's, and you have to be very, very quiet on the war front um, to, um, to fight back against them. So all of them communicate in sign language with, with each other on the war front. Um, and the story centers around this girl, one of them, uh, this girl named Talon, uh, who is one of the strikers. She's a refugee from one of the countries that had fallen to the Federation. She had fled with her mother into Mara and now fights for, for Mara on the front lines. Um, so it's a story about her and her found family that she finds in her fellow strikers. Um, and also about this boy named Red that she finds, you know, he kind of crosses over the war front one day and he's a soldier uh, from the other side. Like he defected uh, from the Federation and, um, and they hate each other. Like they're just like, oh yeah. my God, I can't stand you. Um, he's a prisoner of war and she's, somehow gets saddled with this guy. Um, but then she eventually, there's a moment where she realizes that, oh, Red may actually be the weapon that they were waiting for, like the miracle that they were looking for to, to, to win this, you know, up until now losing war against the Federation. So it's very much like a, a hate to love story. It's a romance. It's very yeah. much a story about fam family and your team and the people in your life that matter. Um, and about this girl who is just, Rail, like throwing herself against his empire in this kind of futile attempt to hold back the, the darkness uh, from coming in um, and, and that she's fighting for this country that she's not 
entirely sure if she wants to be fighting for um right. because my, th- th- this was written like during the like when the elections were happening in 2016 yeah. and and talon was directly inspired by um the a speech by by uh dr khan at the democratic national convention and he was talking about his son humayun khan um who was a, a young muslim american soldier who was killed in Iraq, saving his fellow soldiers. And, and I just couldn't stop thinking about how so many of our young people go off to, to war for us and die for us, like marginalized people from all, yeah. all types of marginalization. And they come back to a country that doesn't give them the respect that they deserve. And, and, and Talon was born from that. And she's very much, I wanted her to be this kind of like, this, 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 this beacon of, of light in a very dark world where she is, trying to figure out, you know, what does it mean to be good? Like, what does it mean to, to, you know, protect who you love? Um, and what does it mean to like, what yeah. does it mean to love your country? So all of those questions were kind of swirling around and got thrown into this story about with, you know, like flesh eating monsters and um, right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And that's I, how it came about. I love all this too, because you know how uh, sometimes readers don't like when, authors are like political <laughs> you know or like <laughs> anything and then it's like yeah. oh they're like oh god marie like keep politics out of it just write your books you're like um and, then, and they're like oh i love sky hunter right and it's like oh uh, god like <laughs> i know yeah. it's so it's so funny um to me because like this is such a perfect example especially we talk about this a lot with um mm-hmm. genre fiction where how it usually is always like spawned out of something political and Mm -hmm. and everything you just said about talent just like it's so true I mean she's you know she's called rad she is just completely disrespected Mm -hmm. she everyone's just like and she's really skilled and everyone's always waiting for her to mess up right because then they get to put her back in that column of like you're unworthy and you don't belong here um and and yeah and it's just like reading about her experience is so um heartbreaking and then you you really am just like yeah like yo screw these people girl and she's like <laughs> bounce like I, I just like I don't know I I like I won't say what happened but I mean there's like in chapter two like some of the um some of the disrespect yeah. that she's shown um is just like so uh upsetting and uh yeah but I I love her she's a badass and I'm glad you like her <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then okay, so so uh, Sky Hunter is um, actually before I ask this next question, um, I, I I remember like reading um, the introduction to Red that first time, and he is so resistant. There's so much uh, mystery around him, and uh, but like as as we start getting to that point and discovering that like oh he might actually be like the the key to like winning this war and everything it's just like oh, god i really i just like the page <laughs> like kept turning um and i just i love yeah. the bond that he has uh with talent um and you've mentioned uh, or it's known that like in steel striker uh he's a narrator um this mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. had you ever considered including him as a narrator in Sky Hunter, or did you want that purely to be a talent story? That's a great question, uh, because in my first draft of Steel Strike, uh, Sky Hunter, which was very different, actually, from what actually came out, um, he was a point, he, he wasn't just a point of view character, he was actually the main character. <laughs> so it was completely, like, flipped around, and I, I okay, so oh I basically, God. like, rewrote the book. <laughs> because oh my god you know the, like my editor and I both figured out like no I think Talon this is actually Talon's story and actually Red can come in later and I was like oh you're right so this um, is it's like your experience yeah. with young elites <laughs> I know I'm like why do I keep doing this my brain is just <laughs> uh, but yeah so he was like the original main character and it was oh from his god. point of view and um and and I also had Talon's point of view so it was it was like both back and forth and then eventually I was like they're in like too many of the same scenes and just saying the same things over and over. And it didn't make sense for them both to be in the story. And Talon's right. story was more compelling for a first book. So, so the whole thing got turned around. Um, but in, in Steel Striker, uh, the two of them are separated and Talon is stuck in the Federation and, um, and Red is, is not like he's in the wilds in, in Mara. Yeah. So now they're on opposite sides of this war and it's, it, I mean, like we get a glimpse of the Federation in the first book, but 
we spend most of our time in the Federation in the second one. And so nice. it felt, it felt <laughs> right to have like the contrast between where they were and their mindsets. And especially since red has, has past trauma from being like an experiment for the Federation. And he's like working through that as he has to venture back into this land to find the girl that he loves. Um, Whereas Talon is experiencing all this trauma for the first time and the horrors of it. So, um, so it felt like a, a better time to have both of them in the story. But yeah, it took a lot of rewrites to get there. That's yeah. awesome. Quickly, uh, just so you all know, if you hear a mysterious sound coming from uh, my side of the world, um, I have a sick dog uh, who's kind of having a little bit of a cough moment. Um, so I'm sorry if I go on mute, that's why. Um, but, but also I'm just like, I'm, it's... That all that is like so incredible to hear and, and absolutely everything that you're speaking to about having the advantages of, especially when you have like your narrators in different mm -hmm. places, it, it really justifies that space because even with Infinity Sun, you know, it's a book with like that series has four mm -hmm. narrators mm -hmm. and, you know, the two main narrators are brothers, <laughs> you know, like they're not coming yeah. from different places either. Um, but, but yeah, they have, they have such, to... I'm sorry, but, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, yeah, I mean, they have, the, they have, distinct voices because like yeah. one is clearly like a little bit more of a um just like chiller dude and the other one's just like loud about his ambitions and everything and you need to find those things but the shapeshifter ness who is kind of like a fan favorite in the series um before arcs happen i had like you know essentially rewritten all his chapters from emil's perspective because i was just like i don't know that we really need him to have this perspective he's just mm -hmm. in the same area and then I was like okay and then a week before we had to print for arcs um I was like hold on I'm gonna try to write some new nest chapters oh um God. that don't involve him um in the same space and just see like you know get some more backstory on him wow, as we go I didn't know that. so yeah I tell people all the time they're like oh this is my favorite chapter I'm like I probably wrote it two days before it went to print like it was <laughs> a first draft essentially um but it, it came That's from wild. that same um intention of like I don't want it to just feel repetitive. It's almost like, well, why do I even have multiple narratives if they're all just mm -hmm. congregated mm -hmm. in the same space? Um, so yeah, I, but I'm, I'm so fascinated by the fact that like Talon wasn't the original Sky Hunter narrator. <laughs> um, uh, so like, but did her character essentially, was she essentially the same character of um, mm -hmm. like all her backstory and everything that we know from Sky Hunter today, or did so much of that change as well? It, it was it was pretty close. I think I think most of it stayed intact. It was just a matter of like what what would now come to the forefront. So there, I think there were like different moments that were highlighted and like different things that mattered. And there were also like like you, I, I had took out. I remember taking out like a bunch of chapters about her past and how she fled into Mara and her connection with Red and, um, and then, um, and then putting it back in like four yeah. months later. And I'm like, you know what, actually that should have been in there and I probably should have just left it. So yeah, gosh, I didn't know that about Affinity Sun. That's, that's wild. Yeah, Cause I never would have known from the final one. It's just, it all works so seamlessly and the voices are so distinct yeah. and different. And, it and thank you. And you hope you can pull that off. Right. And where it's just kind of like, why does this character seem uncopy at it like everyone else you know <laughs> like I really I look back on that like I was like how did I pull that off I just I really you know his chapters are also shorter um yeah. but I was intentional because also I mean and this is the thing um I think to an advantage of Sky Hunter as well where by having read as a narrator um that could have prevented you know like how I spoke to like the intrigue of meeting him for the first time I wouldn't have had that like I would have been kind of in yeah. his head already you know, um, and that was such a propulsive uh, um, moment for me as well. Just I'm like, oh, I really, I just got to know more about this guy <laughs> um, and just like see more of his deal is. And then it's like, oh, cool. Well, now I've like fallen for him. And now I'm in a place where a lot of his backstory isn't, um, isn't going to be like a twist anymore either. Like I now know mm -hmm. everything. So now I get to like be in his head and just like dig deeper. And uh, was there anything that you wish you had, uh, known about red or planned for beforehand uh while writing the um while writing steel striker while writing like, steel striker oh, that's yeah like question. did you did you see like oh shit i should have set this up more in sky hunter or or i wrote oh, myself into yeah. a corner with this um oh man i'm sure i did now i'm trying to remember if 
I think I, I had, I did wish that I had mentioned a little bit more about Red's past and his experiences. Cause I think that you get flashes and glimpses of what happened to him in the past in the yeah. Federation. Um, and then I think when I was writing Steel Striker I, and Talon was experiencing similar things, um, I was like, oh, I wish I had set that up a little bit more in Sky Hunter. Um, that past, um, just to compare and contrast it with Talon. Uh, yeah. So that's something I remember. I'm sure there's more. I feel like I've had this moment in every single one of my books where I'm like, I really wish I had put more of this. Did you have that experience with, with oh, Infinity uh, Reaper? Like Always, yeah. Where I'm just like, oh, why did I say this? Now I'm stuck here and I've got to figure this <laughs> out. And uh, and like, yeah. And it's because you want things to be specific, um, but then you're not yeah. necessarily... That's the, and that's a challenge for writing a series too. You know, it's just mm -hmm. um, like, you've got to plan ahead, but also you can't be too prescriptive in your outlines either because mm -hmm. then maybe you're not necessarily following the characters and their, their genuine journey quite as closely. Um, yeah, I really am yeah. like, like after I'm done with this trilogy, I'm probably going to take a, and you know, this, this duology is, mm -hmm. is done now, the mm -hmm. what if test one. I'm really, I think I'm going to chill with my standalones for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, where I just put it all out on the page and like, that's kind of it. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna ask you one other question about like narrators before I move on. Um, if you had to tell the story um, of this series from another character who isn't Red or Talon, um, who do you think you would be most interested in uh, giving the narrator seat to? That's a great question. I don't think I've ever been asked that before. Um, oh, I'm constantly wanting to know, like, I'm like, and especially from you, where like you're, <laughs> you're, you know, you you have different. Um, it, experiences with like how you come to find your narrator so I'm just like is there someone else that like felt kind that of could, could have that... accidentally gotten in there yeah yeah I I really love writing about Jaren um I feel like yeah. uh if if there was to be like a hypothetical spinoff of Sky Hunter which you know isn't currently in the cards but if I did I think I would want to write something about Jaren and Araman and um I just kind of found myself constantly trying to put them on the page uh, yeah, and it's just uh, he's just such a cinnamon roll in this very vicious world, and I just really wanted, um, I just really liked being in his headspace. Um, I, I, I guess he probably wouldn't have worked out as well as a narrator just because his his narrative it wasn't really his narrative, but um, but yeah, I really liked him. I really liked yeah. Aaron a lot. Yeah, he's great. And I think too with all the stuff with like his dad, um, yeah. you know. Like that could lead to some like really mm -hmm. like meaty like story stuff. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I totally <laughs> see that. Um, okay, I want to do a fight between some of your uh, main characters um, <laughs> uh, across different series. So who would win in a fight? June versus in a fight between June versus Adelina versus Amika versus Talon. <laughs> oh my God, this is like Super Smash Brothers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if, okay, if Adelina did not have her powers, cause I, I feel like with her powers, she would probably just torture all of them to death. Um, right. Although, you know what? That's actually a good question because maybe Talon would win. No, actually no, Adelina would just make her feel I mean, look, like she dies. <laughs> Talon takes down Ghost and everything, you know, the, the creatures. Yeah. Uh, um, so I'm just like, and if Adelina's like distracted during this brawl and someone's like quick enough <laughs> to like make a move, like obviously like that's I, true. I, like, that's girl, true. Like, I, I'm rooting for her, but like, I know. Uh, but yeah. I, okay. Yeah. So who do you think? <laughs> I, I mean, I, okay. I think that it would, it would come down to Adelina and Talon. Um, I think Amika's great, but yeah. she'd probably be hiding in a corner. She's like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I'm a hacker. I can program computers. Um, yeah. And then June is like, I'm gonna hide in the corner too. So like she, yeah. she can fight, but she's not. She doesn't have metal wings attached to her back. Um, so yeah, I'd probably come down to Talon and and Adelina. Maybe if Talon can get her distracted, but yeah. it would probably Adelina would win. I, I think Adelina would. Still it's got to be like kind of. It's sort of like um, when they first announced like the Batman versus Superman movie, where it's just like uh, <laughs> I was like Superman. Uh, Superman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then it's like you start seeing the trailer of like Batman just like punching Superman around. It's just like. How are yeah. you making that make sense? You know, um, and sorry, Ben Affleck is not. Yeah, I really, uh, <laughs> but yeah, maybe there's there's that moment for. I mean, look, I I believe in Adelina, um, <laughs> and uh, um, you know, she's she's speared for a reason. So, uh, okay, there are some cruel, like monstrous experiments in Sky Hunter um, that result in the ghost. So, my question for you is, if you could create like an experiment 
and turn um, turn yourself into a um, magical creature, what would it be? Um, I want to hear your answer to this too. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, gosh. I can go first if you need a minute. Okay, yeah, what, what would you be? I, I would be a phoenix, like hands down. Oh, like, of course, uh, yes. Yes, I, I really yeah. am. Uh, yeah, I just, I've always loved phoenixes since I was a teenager and I have a phoenix tattooed on me. I wrote the, the new cycle yeah, series. Too. <laughs> yeah, Oh, that's right. Did Why I ever I... tell you that? Oh, yeah. No, you, you have told me. <laughs> yeah, I got I, one I just, on my back, but yeah. Exactly. That's what, that's why I was like, wait, why don't I? And like, <laughs> okay, yeah, right. That. Um, and yeah, no, I just, I've always loved the the stories behind Phoenixes. Like I get excited anytime mm-hmm. I'm watching something and it, it just even looks like a Phoenix. I'm like, oh, you're a Phoenix. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and I've bought like tons <laughs> of like little like bird statues that aren't technically Phoenixes, but I act like they're Phoenixes and uh, I'm just I like, love it. yeah, so I, I, I'd go for the Phoenix life. Yeah. It's a good, good, good choice. Um, gosh, I, I really like unicorns, but I feel like they're always getting hunted for their horns. So <laughs> if, if, if people would just leave me alone, maybe. <laughs> but see, if you're like the unicorn, like much like the, the ghosts in Sky Hunter that like, you know, they, grow essentially um like the older they're like, oh, whatever <laughs> older they survive. yeah if you can be this like big ass unicorn that like <laughs> uh, you know like no one's going to mess with you <laughs> that horn is too big yes. we can't use it um yeah i'll be down for being a big ass unicorn <laughs> i love it um okay and then we have a bunch of questions um and we're at our mark so okay i will start looking into these um okay this is Oh, I love this question from Phoebe. Um, hi, Marie. Legends and Sky Hunter are two of my favorite books ever. Is there anything in the new book that you are really proud of or very excited for people to read? Oh, in Steel Striker. Um, yeah, there's quite a few scenes. There's one that's really close to my heart is this kind of quiet moment uh, between Jaren and Red, where they're both like... Um, they're like, they're in the Federation. They're, they're running this whole like mission trying to help Talon and they're just stuck waiting under a bridge for the longest time uh, while the guards go away. And so they're just like wet and cold and they have nothing to do. So they're just like, they just start talking about their love lives. And it's just like this conversation between like two guys trying to figure out like how they feel about the people that they are actually in love with. And I had a lot of fun writing that because it was just like this very vulnerable moment between like Red, who's like super macho, and Jaren, who's who's like more of an elegant, you know, fighter, and that they're like they have these very different um, personalities and very different, yeah. you know, people that they love, but um, have this moment where they're like just just sharing that with each other, and I really love that moment. So oh, I I love like a quiet moment so much. Like I was like, uh, yes, I love. Um, reading about like kick-ass action scenes and fights and brawls and all that stuff. I love watching them. Uh, but when two characters are like coming together, especially from like different backgrounds and they're finding some sense of uh, unity, uh, I don't know, sign me up. Those, I mean, that's like, you're like the king of that. I mean, I every time, <laughs> uh, I've lost kind of the number of times I've cried in your books, Adam. <laughs> like in history and then in more, yeah. every time I'm just like, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day where we were together at like a festival, I think somewhere in Texas. And I, I see you and your husband and you, I, I, I think Primo was there for some reason. Um, and you just walk up to me and you're like, I just finished your book on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> you were just like through the parking lot. I like was not expecting it. I didn't know you were reading it. You're like, I just finished his shoes. <laughs> me on the plane. Yeah, every like, time my reaction to you is always like, Adam, <laughs> I'm always like, <laughs> In the depths of my despair. Oh, God. <laughs> You're so it's... good at these character moments. <laughs> and I was just like, hey, wait. <laughs> uh, it's so great. Uh, okay, there's a question um, uh, that I, oh, I just, okay, wait. I'm, I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. Um, uh, okay, this is from Joan. Um, uh, you've mentioned that you started out as a pantser. Um, has your process changed from then to now? And if you're still a pantser, um uh Joan agrees with me how do you write your series so cohesively (laughs) oh bless (laughs) um the answer is I I don't like we discussed and there's always moments where I'm like frantically trying to figure out you know like a solution around it like I'll give you an example like in legend so if you go back and read the legend series I think in prodigy 
I had this moment where I was trying to explain what exactly happened to the world that made it flood. And I think I said something along the lines of like, the sun went crazy. And I went <laughs> back and like, I was writing champion. And I was trying to refer back and I was like, surely I wrote about actual climate change. And then I went back and I was like, the sun went crazy. I'm like, what, is, <laughs> what the hell does that mean? And I couldn't go back and change it. So it is not as cohesive as it seems, but thank you very much for that compliment. But see, um, but that's like a little world building <laughs> detail that didn't like completely derail your, um, your characters. I, mean, and I was like, I really hope nobody notices it. And I'm sure enough in the reviews, people were like, she said the sun went crazy, what does that <laughs> mean? <laughs> and I'm like, oh God, I have to explain this complete, like just brain fart in science. <laughs> no, you're just like, it's vague. Like, I mean, I don't think we ever, learned why hunger games happened right like it just yeah. just sort of like oh there was like a, a blitz or whatever they called it <laughs> um and i'm just like i don't talk about it we're just gonna yeah pretend, it's dystopian you know, it like we're, <laughs> it's just to, to know that i don't know i feel like it's history like move on um okay uh there's so many great questions okay um there was one that i wanted to ask okay uh speaking about series um this is from jeff was Sky Hunter always envisioned as a duology? And what was the process like for writing this duology? That's a great question. Um, yeah, it was always envisioned as a duology. It just felt like it, it fit. Um, and like my first experience writing duologies, and I'm curious to hear what, how, you know, how you feel writing duology versus a trilogy. Um, yeah. And like, I jumped into duology first with Warcross because I was like, surely it's easier than writing a trilogy. So I'm just cut the middle book out. It, yeah. It's simple. And then as I was writing Wildcard, I was like, oh, and this is actually harder because now I'm putting books two and three into one book. Uh, so yeah. it, was, it actually turned out to be a lot more work. And so when I went into Steel Striker, I had that kind of same like sinking feeling, but also at the same time knowing that, oh, this, this arc fits um, for Talon for like, one was like, she was outside the Federation. One is like, she's inside the Federation and taking, you know, trying to take it down from the inside. So, um, so I always knew that structure was gonna happen. It was, but it was, I knew that second book was gonna be so much harder than writing like the middle book of a trilogy. So yeah. I don't know, what, what was it like for you? Was it, how has it been? Um, I mean, so I still have to write book three in the Infinity mm. Cycle. Um, but I mean, writing the second book for What If It's Us, Here's Us, um, was so much harder than the first book. But I think honestly, it had lots to do with the story and more to do with just to co-writing during yeah. the pandemic. Um, and yeah. especially because like our story, like What If It's Us was sold as a standalone. Um, mm -hmm. And we, Becky and I always, and you know, hoped to like write a sequel, but mm -hmm. that was all gonna be dependent on if readers gave a shit about the first one, <laughs> yeah. you know? And yeah. thankfully they did. And, you know, we had the opportunity, but our story starts two years after the first book, you know? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, mm -hmm. right. it wasn't a, not, a cliffhanger not, yeah. that way. Like Reaper um, picks up pretty much ex immediately after Infinity Sun. Yeah, like, wow. I mean, not even a second actually yeah. it's like i mean yeah. you, it just switches like literally narratives. yeah um and like you really just get dropped in there same thing for book three from what i have written for it for it so mm -hmm. far um but that was you know my editor had a conversation with me he was like are you sure you want to write a trilogy and i was like oh yeah totally <laughs> um and this past year i've been kind of wishing i was like oh should i've just done the duology you know um but mm -hmm. i didn't plan to write a duology i plan to write a trilogy and that's like I would have written Infinity Sun differently um, had I um, wanted it to just be a duology. Like, I'm not sure it would have ended in the same place. I wouldn't have stacked it with all the storylines that I did because I'm like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, I'm gonna, going to be able to like execute on all these things. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's, I really don't think I'm going to do a trilogy again, uh, okay. like after this. I think it's yeah. probably duology life if... Yeah. Even <laughs> um, no, I hear you. I'm gonna have to get advice from you on writing standalones. I think my my next one, like unannounced one, is a standalone. So yeah, I mean, yeah. you have Kingdom of Bat. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, truly, it's just I've seen so many um, authors as well, like who were writing trilogies, and it was like, I'm gonna do a duology, and it's just like I'm gonna do a standalone. I'm just like, oh my god, <laughs> this does not look promising for me trying to do the reverse now, <laughs> like wanting to like write series. Um, and you know, because it, it's it's also, it's hard. Like the only reason I'm not writing book three in the 
infinity cycle right now is because I need a break from those voices. It's four narrators. Like mm-hmm. literally the, the, my past few years have been writing Ben and what if it's us and Emil, Brighton, Maribel and Ness in yeah. the infinity cycle. Like I've just been writing those same five characters back and forth for the past few years. Yeah. And I'm, so I'm writing like essentially a palette cleanser book uh, yeah. right now, because I just, I want to be able to do justice to my, the finale, the finale. So will probably be my only trilogy. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> and, uh, um, because yeah, it's, it's, it's hard work. Um, I, I've loved to, like, you know, writing a series, but mm-hmm. it's, no, I hear you. It's yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's turning out amazing. I'm super excited for book three, but I hear you on like Thanks. how hard it is. Yeah, I, I hope it. I can pull it, it will off. Be wor- it will be worth every, every page. Yeah. Yes. I know it. <laughs> um, here's a bit of a lighter question, um, from, uh, Cynthia, by the way, there's so many great questions. I'm going to do my best. Um, how do you come up with your character names? Um, they are always so great. That's from Cynthia. Oh, thank you. Um, I think Cynthia is trying to get uh, a character name after her. Ah, um, and, I can and, figure uh, that out. <laughs> that would help a lot because sometimes I'm like, I don't know. And I just have like yeah. brackets in place and like yes. <laughs> the first draft, like bracket one and bracket two are in love. And oh, um, no, I have to know the character's name. I can't. Yeah. I, I have to just... know my mains, but not the, so you, you so everyone is names. Like before Oh, I start. have to know the bodega owner. Like I've got, like if I, <laughs> if I meet, if my character is meeting the owner of the bodega, like I'm looking through names, like I'm Googling names. I'm like, I'm seeing like, are you this? And then like, I was like, no, your, your son is that you're this. <laughs> uh, like I just went through this like a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah. Like I have, I can't, I can't. Wow. Okay. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I really like that though. I feel like the name is such an important part of who the character is. So I really should just take the time to like figure that out sometimes. Oh, like, I, get, I just get lazy sometimes when I'm like meeting like the, you know, the bodega owner. And, yeah. You know, and I'm just like, <laughs> oh, I don't want to think about this right now. And I'll do that same thing with like, I don't know, like insert science or like insert, you know, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> the sun went crazy. Maybe I just forgot to take it out. But like, um, yeah, with names, I, um, sometimes the names have meaning. Uh, with Talon, I wanted to find a name that evoked her strength and that she's you now, she, she's a good hearted person and she's very loyal, but she's also got some claws. Like she's not going to just back down um, and let people walk all over her. So I wanted to show that she has some kind of inner strength that she's not just, you know, like a pushover. So, um, and she's also like a badass fighter. So, uh, so Talon yeah. sounded like a good name for her. And, and I think Red, um, Red probably just came from just the fact that he had a pretty bloody past. So I just, he was right. always like red in my head. Um, yeah. So, so I don't know. He was, he was just always, red. I also just really like names that are just like, like things like named after things, like days, you know, <laughs> yeah. June, like red. So I, I, I've noticed that's like kind of a, a trend and, um, and Adelina is named because uh, her name means noble, which I thought was kind of ironic for her. And Oh, I didn't know so, that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I don't know what about you like what are some of the meanings behind your names or do you have them or is it like um yeah good I like I know I got I chose Mateo from they both die at the end Mm -hmm. because um there was this kid I didn't like in high school his name was Matthew and he had all his like all his like like in friends got to call him Mateo and that was like what he wanted his like name to be and I was just like like I did not like this kid he was so (laughs) annoying um and then I used that name to create my most like lovable yeah I was about to cinnamon say. character yeah <laughs> really so, I would never would have guessed that yeah I love it <laughs> and then Rufus uh from they both die I, um I use because I had I grew up with this dude named Rufus on my block and then the only other Rufuses I've encountered have been dogs so I just wanted to like reclaim that name for a human uh like that was literally my intention I was like <laughs> where did all the Rufus humans go like I'm just so uh, yeah, so that's where Rufus came from, like, 100%. I love 100%. it. Fighting the good fight for Rufus yeah. is everywhere. <laughs> Maribel I got from Infinity Sign. I got because um, I named her after a former Barnes & Noble manager of mine. Um, oh, and, uh, you know, but then, like, every now and again, so, like, Dylan, the best friend in uh, the What If It's Us duology is based after, uh, modeled after one of my best friends, David Arnold, who's an author. And I was just like, David, give me a name with a D. He said, Dylan. I was like, cool. And like, that's just how it happened. <laughs> um, so yeah, but I, I, I love um, finding names. Uh, so yeah, too. but yeah. I, and anything that feels like distinct too, um, like Talon, you know, I was just like, cool. Like I, 
if anyone in YA is talking about talent, we're going to know who they're talking about. Like, that's not going to get confused with, like, the contemporary novel that I'm writing, right? Like, I don't want to <laughs> just have, like, a talent, like, rolling around there as badass as that would be. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. Uh, um, I, I want to try to spread the love a little bit. There's some great questions, but I don't want to just okay. keep asking from the same people. Um, oh, I love this question from Vishwa. Uh, do any of your characters from past series inspire new characters? For example, Ooh. did Day inspire Red in any way? It's a That's great a great question. question. Um, yeah, also something I've never been asked before. Um, yeah, same. Yeah, I'm, I don't think there's anyone that's like a direct inspiration, but I'm pretty sure there's like types of characters that kind of keep showing up uh, in my books that are a little bit similar. Like I think that Tess and Jaren actually have maybe quite a bit in common. I just really like the idea of somebody like my main having that, that sweet, um, like good hearted, um, kind of insecure, uh, like close friend, you know, who, yeah. who is there for them and stands up for them. And, and so, um, so it could be that Jaren is now I think about it probably indirectly inspired by Tess. And I think in all of my books, I've always got like that one guy who's, who's like that, you know, um, uh, so I don't think I don't think Day directly inspired Red in any way. I think Red Red is kind of like the one that I don't think was is like any of the other characters from my other books, um, just because he's very like closed off um, and doesn't really like to show his emotions, at least in the first book. And it's not until Steel Striker that he kind of, we kind of get to see a little bit more of who he is. And that's because I didn't really know him in book one. And so I yeah. had this kind of mis mystery about him as well. And, um, and Day is just like an open book. Like he's just right. <laughs> like, it's, it's very, like he's, he's probably the character I know the best out of all of my characters. So, um, so they're pretty different, but I, I, I do find that there's like certain tropes that I just genuinely love that just keep showing up. Yeah. Well, How about you? I, I, mean, I know. I curious. honestly, no, I don't, I don't think that I have, Yeah. I mean, I'll probably walk away from this chat like, oh, wait. <laughs> this book made me want to do this, you know? And I'm like, but I don't have that right now. It really is such an excellent question, uh, though. Mm -hmm. And it's one that uh, I just want to like think more on in the yeah. future. Um, just as we're talking about Day and Red, and since I made your um, your young woman fight, um, who do you think would win in a fight between Day and Red? <laughs> oh God, Red. I feel like Day would be defeated in most fights because yeah, his skill like, is I to run. I feel run, like Red like would he... destroy him. But I was like, <laughs> let me just like... I. I feel like I read if, 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 if they fought red would definitely win, but he would have to catch him first. So I think day is very good right. at getting away and he, and red would just be like, where'd you go? And then day yeah. would just be like hiding somewhere, like climbing some building or, you know, <laughs> under a bridge or whatever, like just waiting it out. <laughs> it's, it's just, parkour. Yeah. <laughs> parkour, parkour. Yeah. parkour, parkour. <laughs> um, okay. This is a question from Maddie. Um, uh, if you had to pick a favorite character you've written, who would it be? I know that could be a really, Difficult. Your favorite uh, child. For, yeah. Uh, it, yeah. <sighs> um, okay, I'm gonna have to pick a couple. Um, and I want to hear <laughs> yours too, because I okay. <laughs> from you. Um, uh, I think uh, Amika is definitely one of my favorites, just because oh. she's kind of like my wish fulfillment character. Um, she's like, a, she's got a little bit of me. She's probably got the most of me than any of my main characters, but she's yeah. like the cool version of, you know, she's like skateboarding, <laughs> you know, knows what to say at the right time and not like three days later, you know, um, hacker yeah. person who can actually keep like hair dye in her hair all the time. Right. Um, so she's like, I'm like, I wish I could be Amika. Um, so she's probably one of my favorites, but um, I really like Adelina too. She was a pain in the ass to write, but I, I yeah. have a really soft spot for her just because she was so prickly and um, so hard to wrangle. And I don't think I've ever had a character who was that hard to wrangle. And she still gives me a hard time sometimes. I'm like, I'm not even writing about you anymore. Why are you in my head? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that means more so, Adelina, but like, um, <laughs> Oh man, I can't survive another point of view yeah. from her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you need someone to like beta read that book as you're writing and then also <laughs> follow up with like really like cute memes and gifts to like kind of restore the humanity um in your soul like I'm happy to be that person for you I Aww. volunteer as tribute <laughs> um so uh, maybe I'll yeah. write a book about just Adelina going about everyday life I think that would be fun where she's like oh. Adelina trying to make a pie 
Like right. Adelina <laughs> trying to walk her dog. Adelina, go shopping. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And she's just like losing it in the co- grocery store. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I would love that. Um, wait, I th- did I just forget it? A question or was oh, I gonna ask you so, so who are who are your favorite oh that's answers? what it was that's what I was about to say I was about to answer <laughs> um I mean I really love writing Brighton um in the yeah. infinity cycle which makes me homophobic because he's the one straight narrator of the four <laughs> um narrators of the four queer of the four <laughs> narrators um but uh but yeah I just I mean I I I really admire how ambitious he is I am not in love with everything that he does to <laughs> achieve that, uh, but I just have a lot of respect for him. And you know, people are like, <sighs> I, I saw, um, I got tagged in something the other day that was like, oh my, and for Infinity Reaper, they were just like, oh my God, four Brighton chapters in a row. Like, I want to put this book down. And I'm just like, okay, I mean, it's <laughs> I kind love of that. his book. <laughs> like, and I'm like, you're also not supposed to like, be That's fully in love with him you're supposed to be annoyed and frustrated i'm doing a great job <laughs> like this is like no, i find my brighton props. like fascinating he's he's honestly my favorite character from the affinity sun series just because he's so yeah. like unlikable like i just i yeah. this is why we're friends because adelina is so unlikable people are like your reviews are like she's such yeah. a horrible person <laughs> my god and i'm like i know isn't it great like like I with bow before brighton, her. It's the same you know i i would love to see a, a short story with them like, oh together. God, but yes. like Brighton is just so like you just address so many questions of power and like just things that we can relate to every time I read Brighton chapters I'm like I know you're wrong but man I relate <laughs> like I get I yeah get you. <laughs> you I, know? It, it's just and it's and there's just something about ambition especially in a social media age where mm-hmm. you just face such a um you just have such an like an unsatiable appetite and you know Brighton like I remember years ago thinking like oh I hope I get 50 likes on this post right yeah. um and now thinking like oh this only got 5,000 likes like it's so <laughs> disgusting and I hate that part of myself right oh, um see. but it's like it's yeah. an honest part of me that's an honest mm-hmm. bone in my body that I feel um mm-hmm. and I got to like voice some of that like in the book anyway so I have yeah. I have a lot of fun writing this character um and it this conversation makes me really excited to like write that finale um but I'm excited to read it all right uh um this is from sandra have you ever grown so attached to one of your characters that you didn't want to finish writing their story or found it hard to say goodbye to them um Aww. i I'm, yeah i mean as the yeah. series queen i'm dying to hear uh <laughs> how what that uh experience has been like for you yeah i that's a good question i feel like i think i'm always i'm always some combination of like relieved and sad you know, when I come to the end of like a character's journey, because when, you know, we're leaving, I'm like, oh, thank God I made it. <laughs> but yeah. the, like the other half being just like, oh, I'm not going to see you anymore. I'm going to, you're like, you're going to be in the ether of wherever characters go, you know, after our books finish. And I very much felt that at the end of Steel Striker and in Steel Striker, like all my endings kind of, I get a little weepy at endings, but Steel Striker left me like a mess. I was like a mess wow. at the end of that book um, when I was writing it because uh, like the last two chapters or so, I was just, I very much felt like I was saying, you know, goodbye to, to my characters. Not that everybody dies, but you know, maybe some will, but like, yeah. it just, like, it just felt like I was saying goodbye to them and like wishing them well, like parents sending their kid off to college sort of yeah. sadness, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Do you get no. sad or? No, I, just, <laughs> I, I don't like, I really, yeah. I, I mean, I, it also helps that like none of my characters are ever alive at the end of the books, you know? Um, but, uh, this is true. Yeah. But, <laughs> it's just, no, I mean, there, there's been some grief. Um, I, I think mm-hmm. the hardest one for me was more happy than not. Um, that ending yeah. um, was the reason that for the five year anniversary, um, <laughs> Um, for the five year anniversary, I like wrote a new book because mm-hmm. I just needed to <clears throat> continue his story. It's just so sad. Aww, I'm gonna give him a minute. Poor baby. He's so cute. I like. Poor he doesn't deserve this. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna grab another Dang. question for you. I'm yeah. gonna answer. Well, we're gonna take maybe like a couple more questions. Um, uh, <clears throat> and I'm gonna put you on mute for a second. Okay. Just to give him his his privacy. Cortez. Oh. Oops. 
love this question um, from uh, Sophia, um, who said that, uh, Sophia said, I love the mother-daughter relationship in this series. How has becoming a mother influenced your writing? Oh, that's a wonderful question. It's a beautiful um, question, yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful and very thoughtful question. I, I have definitely changed a lot in my writing uh, since having a kid, and I didn't even realize that it had changed until I noticed that the kind of scenes that I was writing and what I couldn't bear to put on the page anymore had shifted. And, and Sky Hunter was the first book that, cause I was, I was pregnant when I was drafting Sky Hunter and then um, noticed in just the process of pregnancy that I was like, Oh, I actually can't stomach writing this scene anymore. Like this type of scene. And so there were a couple of things that um, I might have put in that I otherwise like, like in the past, I would have been like, yeah, whatever, I'll put it in. And then, and then in that moment, I was just like, I, I can't, I can't do it. Um, so that was the first time I felt the change. And, and I think a lot of the moments in, in Sky Hunter between Talon and her mother came, did very much come about because I'm now mother and I, because I understand that bond so much better um, than I did before. And the, and what, what Talon's mother went through and like what my mother went through as an immigrant um you know bringing us to a new country and like making it and um somehow holding everything together and then somehow you know staying like humored and like and having like a cheery <laughs> attitude like when you're going through like such hardship with a kid like with your child um in tow i can't even i can't even fathom that you know i've i've been blessed with the fact that my mom brought me here so that i don't have to do that and so um so a lot of that those feelings went into uh, that relationship uh and and with like the story that i'm drafting now that's um the unannounced book like i like there's a couple the, i wrote i wrote a scene in that book that i would never have understood how to write um you know before before having a baby. And it's two of just the two scenes that made me cry the hardest, I guess, that I've ever cried. So I like different things affect me now. It's really weird. I, I don't like my whole brain chemistry like changed and it took me a good like year and a half to like figure figure out how that changed. So yeah, I'm sure that now you're just like, oh, I'm not gonna kill any like stock nameless moms um anymore <laughs> you're just like no you're safe there's an avalanche yeah. that took up the entire town except you and your except child. you <laughs> yeah, yeah it's like, like with pets like in books i'm like i just like everyone else is gonna die a horrible death except like june's dog who's just like panting and happy <laughs> through the whole thing <laughs> i know like i there's something i like i want to write um like a future book and uh I, I, I mean, to let everyone know from the get-go, like, the dog's going to be okay. I promise you the dog's going to be okay. <laughs> yes. Like, of everything that I'm willing to do to characters, I do not have the heart to do that to a dog. So, like, the dog... Because I think there's that even, is. like, a website, like, um, the dog dies in this one or the, the dog doesn't die. Something oh, I love... Com. I should refer to that. Gosh, that there's, would help me out. That would help me a lot with John Wick. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> that would warn oh me about God. John Wick. <laughs> Prim was like, let's go see this great movie. And I'm like, okay. And then like like 30 minutes in, his puppy dies. And I was like, what the hell are you taking? I was so mad. I almost walked out of the theater. <laughs> and I just love uh, the best part is just like throughout that entire franchise now, everyone's just like, all oh, this because of dog. <laughs> it's like, yes. <laughs> like, yes. You guys set this man off. And I yep. love it. Um <laughs> All right, final question. Um, uh, this is from Mia, and we were kind of just hinting on this a little bit, but um, it was the most upvoted question, so we will answer it. Do you have any future projects you're excited about? Love your books, Marie, with a heart. Oh, bless. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I have um, the unannounced book that I have right now, which I, I really hope I get to say the title someday, so I just stop saying unannounced book. But um, yeah, it's uh, so like Steel Striker was my my pandemic book in that it was like conceived, drafted, edited, like from the March, 2020 onward. And like, it was like fully my pandemic book. And it was, I put a lot of catharsis into it, um, but it was hard. Like it was a hard book to write because there were so many like heavy things that I needed to figure out while the world was like just going bananas. So um, the unannounced book was like my escapism one. So whenever I got, whenever it was too much for me to work on like a heavy scene in Steel Strike or something, I would just be like, okay, I'm gonna sneak some candy now, 
and write this like escapism book. And it's just very like, it's just, it was, it's really fun. Um, it, it kind of helped me um, escape like, you know, the confines of lockdown for a little while because characters are traveling and, you know, like the world is in it. It's, um, it's just, I, I had, I haven't had this much fun writing a first draft, maybe ever. Like I hate writing first drafts. I hate it. And for some reason, I really, really, really loved writing this first draft. Um, and so I'm really excited to share that with everybody. And there's like a couple other random things that are like, like writing related, but not like novel related that, um, right. that I've really been enjoying doing. And I know you like, you're working on like really, really cool script stuff right now that I'm so excited yeah. to hear about. Um, yeah, it must, it must be a blast. No, I mean, it's, it's fun. I, I just, I, you speaking to um, just the, the joy of like that first draft, I was like, oh, I, I hope to find that feeling again. Cause that really yeah. is such a, I feel like it's been a minute since I've like had that. Um, but yeah, definitely working on a lot of uh, script stuff, like mainly um, for they both die at the end and more happy than not. And like a different adaptation that we haven't announced yet. Um, that like, I hope that we get to soon. Um, and I hope all these things most importantly happen. <laughs> uh, yeah. but, uh, I've been having fun um, playing around in, in that space as well. But no. Marie, this was so fun. <laughs> um, Always so fun with you. Thank, thank you, you so much for letting me be part of Skyhunter slash Steel Striker <laughs> um, day. <laughs> thank you so so much for hosting me and for an amazing and fun chat as always. Like I know every time we get on together, it's gonna be a blast and it was. Um, so fun. We could talk all day. So thank 100%. you. And, and thank you so readers much, and attendees, thank you so much for your questions because they were really great. And as authors awesome. who've been in this for a minute, some of you asked some questions that we have never been asked before. So that always mm -hmm. makes a, a chat even more refreshing and fun. So thank you so much. Yes. Thank you all so, so much. That was so much fun. Thank you viewers so much for your questions. And Marie and Adam, thank you for the amazing conversation. Um, remember, you can still click the link in the chat to purchase Steel Striker, and you can check out our website for other great titles by the authors. Um, signed book plates are available while supplies last. You can learn about other upcoming events in the Children and Teens Department on our website, politics-pros.com. Just click on the Children and Teens tab and then click events for a calendar of upcoming events. You can also view past events on our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram at Kids and Pros. Thank you again, Marie and Adam, so much. It was so Thank lovely you. to hear everything you had to say and for those super unique questions that have never been answered before. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Jane. Thank you, Politics and Pros, you, for being on this awesome event. It was such a um, pleasure having it was you. So fun. Enjoy the rest of Pub Week, Marie.